In the Spanish Civil War of 1936-39, to thousands of men and women from around the world joined the international brigades to defend Spain's elected government against a fascist-backed military revolt. General Franco eventually triumphed, but the international brigade set an example of anti-fascism and solidarity that continues to inspire people to this day. Two and a half thousand men and women from Britain and Ireland served in the brigades. More than 500 gave their lives. At home, a mass aid Spain movement helped Spanish refugees and sent food and medicine to Spain. This incredible story can be found in the archives of the Marx Memorial Library in London. The volunteers who went to fight in Spain from our movement, when you look back at the people who went, and I look back at the people from my union who went over to fight, they all were examples of what good Labour people should be. They weren't just people with a union card, they're people who've been involved in industrial action, they were fierce, fierce defenders of democracy. Most of the International Brigade volunteers were manual workers from Britain's mines, docks, shipyards, depots and factories. Many were already trade union activists. They understood that fascism was a threat to the labour movement and the international working class. Some volunteers went on to become leading figures in the British trade union movement. Among them was Jack Jones, a Liverpool docker who was wounded at the Battle of the Ebro in 1938. From 1968, he was General Secretary of the Transport and General Workers Union, then Britain's biggest union, and was the instigator of the 1974 Health and Safety at Work Act. Very brave people. I mean, the, the, the audacity, the, the bravery of so many in the International Brigade was very considerable. And it, it meant that many very, very good people who would have been leaders in their different walks of life were killed at quite an early age. The example of anti-fascism and international solidarity shown by Jack Jones and his comrades in Spain continues to inspire trade unionists today. Jim Prendergast, I can't remember, I, th I, think, I, think he was in, I think he was in this battalion. Yeah. He was wounded at Arama. Jim. Yeah. When I came, came across Jim, um, who fought the, fought the black shirts in Cable Street, then he went to Spain, fought in Arama, fought a suicide hill and all the rest of it. He'd been and fought in the Second World War, so he, he's fought in fascism in all these various different forms and conflicts. So he was a great socialist, a communist, an international brigade and a massive inspiration. I didn't realise that there were doctors, nurses, surgeons, physios going over there to, to, to show their support and solidarity and I just I find it very inspiring and um, to me being a nurse is, is about it's about caring but it's also about showing solidarity and strength and that's when I think about those nurses that went over to Spain that's how I see them as kind of very strong women. Across the globe women showed support for the Spanish Republic under siege in Britain, they played leading roles in raising humanitarian relief and helping Spanish refugees. Others travelled to Spain to help the cause of democracy and anti-fascism. The first Briton who died in action in Spain was the artist Felicia Brown, killed on the Aragon Front in August 1936. The Spanish Medical Aid Committee supported the volunteer medical personnel, including many nurses, who worked in frontline hospitals. One of them was Thora Silverthorne, daughter of a Welsh miner, who returned home from Spain to campaign for nurses' rights and the creation of the NHS. To know that one of the nurses that had gone over during the, you know, to help during the Spanish Civil War actually was part of this, the sort of beginnings of the NHS here, that is amazing, you know, and I wish we knew more about her. It's so wonderful to have a space like this um, to be able to, to kind of preserve all of these photos and letters and pamphlets. And, and these are real stories from real people. Fascism was 
was expanding. It was it was seeking to take over the world. It was so what was happening uh, in one country, they knew that other countries would soon be um, in in the front line. Um, and and if you were, had a kind of internationalist outlook, you I think you were kind of more motivated um, to go and do something about that. The men and women who joined the international brigades came from more than 50 countries around the world. Many were drawn from communities with experience of discrimination and repression. They fully understood the special danger posed by fascist ideology. Among the volunteers from Britain and Ireland were more than 350 Jewish anti-fascists. Several had already taken to the streets to combat fascism and anti-Semitism at home. From 1934, um, Oswald Mosley's British Union of Fascists particularly targeted the East End of London where 60,000 Jews lived in one square mile. By 1936 the violence had, ha had increased a lot, the threat against the Jews was a daily threat and it culminated in the Battle of Cable Street uh, which was the day that he wanted to invade the Jewish areas, make a show of strength, march right through those Jewish areas. And there was massive resistance by Jewish and non-Jewish people. Charlie Goodman, who um, was 21 years old at the, at the time of the Battle of Cable Street, there were more than 80 people arrested, but a handful of them got custodial sentences. Uh, and he was in prison um, for, for three months. And he was determined to, when he came out of prison that he was going to continue the fight against fascism and very quickly after he was released he was off to Spain. Charlie Hutchinson, a mixed-race Londoner and chair of the Young Communist League's Fulham branch, served in Cordoba, Madrid, Teruel, Aragon and the Ebro. Interviewed in 1984 he explained, I'm half black, I grew up in the National Children's Home and Orphanage. Fascism meant hunger and war. Among the U.S. volunteers, there were many African Americans, including the communist Oliver Law, commander of the Abraham Lincoln Battalion at the Battle of Brunette. The men and women of the International Brigades were in the vanguard of a generation that stood up to fascism and fought for social justice. Many had taken part in the hunger marches and the unemployed workers' movement following the economic crash of 1929. At last a star for desperate men, wrote David Marshall, describing his feelings of being able to defend the elected left-wing government of the Spanish Republic. Having worked as a clerk in the Dole office in Middlesbrough, he had witnessed the misery and economic hardship of the 1930s. After enlisting with the International Brigades, David joined the Communist Party, which was calling for a popular front of all progressive parties to fight fascism. Scarred by the horrors of the First World War, many in the Labour Party were initially slow to respond. But once the threat of fascism became clear, they joined the demand to help the Spanish Republic. Labour leader Clem Attlee visited the International Brigades in Spain and the British Battalion named its first company after him, the Major Attlee Company. Um, well, this is another photo of Attlee addressing Caxton Hall meeting on food for Spain in 1937. Um, because the fascists were bombing um, Spain from the air, there were lots of food shortages and um, leading Labour figures like Attlee mm -hmm you know, ask people to raise these funds. And I think about a million pounds was raised in total in Britain, which is kind of phenomenal today's money. Yeah. Several Labour members gave their lives to the anti-fascist cause in Spain, including North Kensington councillor Lewis Clive, killed at the Ebro in 1938. So this is um, Lewis Clive, a report of his death um, in the summer of 1938. Mm. And see here, it says Lewis Clive's death was an especially tragic aspect. It says that it occurred during an attack on a hill outside Gandesa and that he was leading the major Attlee company at the time. So he was an elected councillor yeah. representing the Labour Party. Exactly. Mm -hmm. you know, saw the threat of fascism in Spain mm. and that was an immediate threat in the UK yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. So he made that decision to go out and fight. 
his passion around fighting fascism and the party's position on socialism um, are intertwined in a sense and it's so important that I think this story is told in the way that you know you're sharing it because it's so important for us to be reminded of how we are today as a Labour Party and those that went before us and fought for these principles uh, and this just cause. The Spanish Civil War created an unprecedented humanitarian crisis. Across Spain, tens of thousands of refugees fled Franco's bombs and advancing army, with nearly half a million of them seeking safety abroad. Some made their way to Britain, including nearly 4,000 children from the Basque country in northern Spain, who arrived on British shores on the 23rd of May 1937. This remains the biggest single influx of refugees into Britain in a single day. So here we've got a lot of our papers that relate to the Aid Spain movement and specifically um, the help that was given to the 4,000 Basque refugee children that came over here in 1937. We've got a lot of printed publicity kind of material to raise funds and to ask for support for these children like this. How scary it should have been for them, so leaving your country mm -hmm. under the bombs yeah. and going to the unexpected. And being so young, they, they wouldn't speak English. No. They are so, so young, seven years old, nine years old, 14, not even teenagers. The ages were from seven to 15, but some of the children came over who were in fact six. This is my first stop, uh, home if you like. To me now, looking at this photo, that how tiny so many of us were. The British Conservative government under Baldwin has refused to take refugees from the Spanish Civil War. The astonishing reason given was that if they were to do so, there would be fewer mouths to feed in Bilbao and resistance to Franco's forces would be prolonged and this would contravene the terms of the Treaty of Non-Intervention. German and Italian planes were bombing Spanish towns and cities, including Guernica, subject of Picasso's famous painting. This systematic targeting of innocent civilians was something new in modern European warfare. The distress of refugees agitates Parliament when it reassembles lobbying by students urging arms for Spain, adding to the natural sympathy of members. The doorstep of number 10 Downing Street has been daubed with red paint as some kind of protest. The bombing provoked outrage around the world and public opinion in Britain forced a reluctant Conservative-led government to allow in the refugees on condition that they receive no state support. In response, Local groups and volunteers came together to care for the children in homes across the UK. This key strand in the British Aid Spain movement, which also raised in today's money millions of pounds for medical and food aid to Spain, remains a lasting example of community, citizenship and international solidarity. Young people should study and learn about the Aid Spain movement and the solidarity of the British people with uh, the Spanish Republic um, because uh, they, they should feel uh, inspired and, and do similar causes today against uh, this racism and xenophobia and we are having in, in, in this, in this time. Find out more about the International Brigades, about the refugee Basque children and how the British people supported the Aid Spain movement in the archives of the Marx Memorial Library. Help keep this memory alive by supporting the International Brigade Memorial Trust. No pasarán, they shall not pass. The air was ringing with the voices of Marcy, Dublin and down in the drill yards and the cafes There was talk of a new world being born 
A match is struck, a lamp throws its light, holding out against the 